We've been involved with the Whitbread slash Volvo race now um, for over 30 years, so it's kind of half of my life, if you like. Um, and we've been lucky enough to be very successful in it. Um, and I think this this new phase of the Volvo is quite special. I mean, we're we're um, really quite delighted to have been picked to design the boat. And I think for the younger guys in the office, it's a huge opportunity. And they're they're the guys who are really leading the charge on this particular effort. Um, I'm around to help when I'm needed, which is less these days. <laughs> um, but it's uh, really quite exciting to see the boat come together. From my standpoint, um, I think what um, I would what would make me satisfied would be firstly that they get a lot more boats to the start line than they've had, because that would then justify the change to a one design class. So if they could get eight or ten boats to the start line, uh, that would be fantastic. Uh, and from my point of view as a designer, if they can all get around the track without a breakdown and they sail fast and they handle well, then that's heaven for me. <laughs> when I first got involved or was about to get involved in the late 70s, the race was very much an adventure. So people picked up um, existing boats, got a band of people to, together, mostly amateur, and entered this Whitbread race to race around the world. Um, and it quite quickly evolved to people doing um, specific designs and building boats specifically for the Whitbread race. Uh, and certainly by 1981, when we were first involved, um, a good number of the boats were specifically designed and built for the race. And from there, it became more focused towards um, building boats that would excel in those conditions, ignoring um, other races that they might do, so they became Whitbread race-specific boats.